to begin by quoting Victor Hugo. Uh, there is nothing as powerful in the world as an idea whose time has come. Beautiful words. But the questions for us, uh, especially today, has the time come to create a new customer journey to digitization uh, in the financial sector? Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time uh, to be here. My name is Jarek Sokolinski, Business Now, and today my guests are Nicolas Grilly, Global Product Manager, Financial Services uh, Industry Action. Hi all. Hi all. Thanks for having me. Hi. Piotr Korzeniowski, uh, CEO, COO, uh, PV Pro. Hi, Jarek. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, Wojtek Ozimek, last but not least, uh, CEO One to Tribe. Hi all. Nice to meet you. Hello, everybody, again. And uh, what I have learned is that the customer loves banking digital. You probably uh, as well. At the same time, uh, sometimes the paperwork drives people crazy. So the challenge is integrating digitization with traditional banking services uh, to redefine the customer uh, experience. So sometimes banking completely new approach, especially if we're talking about the uh, physical location, physical branches. First question to, to our guest, Nicola. In what way do you envision that digitization can help the bank redefine uh, your customer experience? Yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, I mean, I think uh, digitization has been with us for a long time now. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion around it, different banks taking different pace in, in their digital transformation uh, program. Um, and, and like you all said, I, I think it's, uh, it's about the redu reducing that dependency on paperwork that then starts giving you more freedom as to how you run your business. Um, you know, if you think about it, if you have to depend on papers that are sitting in a branch, then you probably your cast your users or your your employees will not be able to actually uh, operate nowadays with the situation we have, right? Um, so as as opposed to um, a digital bank that is actually uh, able to fully onboard new customers completely remotely, right? By authenticating them remotely, by um, scanning their IED documents and validating them with third party uh, solutions completely remotely. Um, you know, it's a completely different different experience and it's, it's a different way to, to uh, run the bank and a different experience from a customer perspective as well. Um, and then it's about giving them options, right? If do they want to uh, go to a branch, they can go to a branch, but otherwise they can do everything uh, remotely from home. And I think it's not only it's not only about the customer in this case, it's also uh, about the bank's employees. Uh, what is their experience? Is Do they have a, a digital experience? Um, because if they did, then they could be serving their customers from home completely, you know, naturally. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we have a lot of channels. Mm -hmm. uh, and you probably heard about the omnichannel strategy, especially in, in retail sector. So the, the question is, how important is for the bank strategy to offer uh, omnichannel capabilities? So I mean I think omnichannel has been uh, an overused password in the in the last few years as well. Um, but to me, it's critical. I think it's uh, it really is critical in order to give customers the best experience possible. Uh, and I tell you why. I, um, I think it's because um, it will give customers more choice, right? As to what channel do they want to use, really want to use, not they have to use because there's a certain restriction, but what is it they preferred. Uh, you know, option or how, what is the preferred option to actually transact and, and, and bank. Um, it also saves the customers 
time, right? So if they say they choose to uh, do a certain transaction or open an account online from, from their home, uh, and at some point in the process they they find a, a problem or they, they cannot continue for whatever reason, they know, in you know, if you're providing an omnichannel experience, they know that they can just simply pick up the phone or even use the chat uh, embedded in an online banking, for example, to uh, to contact the customer service representative, who in turn will will then allow them to continue the process. So they don't have to repeat any of the the steps they have already carried out. They don't have to um, re-explain what they're trying to do. Right. So it gives you that sort of seamless flow of the whole process and the whole customer interaction with the bank, um, which at the end shows that the bank actually values the customer time and i think that's that's one of the things that um that will improve the customer improve the customer journey dramatically mm -hmm. do you see the potential for uh, how digitization can enhance the um, the customer expectation uh, when we can redefine the the, the 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 customer journey for better services and uh, and customer satisfaction yeah i mean i i think the the customer expectations are the ones that are actually running a revolution right um if you think about it a, a few years ago we if we wanted to buy um, some music we had to go to a store buy a cd right come back and and try it um now you get it music from anywhere you want you know at any point uh, any time during the day so it's a completely seamless experience right and it's not only with music this happens with food this happens with clothing etc um everything is kind of Im immediate right um and i think that is what is actually then driving you know the same expectation in the financial services sector as well. Just just a quick um, story from my side. Um, a few months ago, I I, I thought well I'd buy a few shares uh, from some companies just to try it out. Never done it before, so it was the first experience. My natural reaction was well I I knew my my bank this is a, a tier one bank in the UK uh, will offer this. So I went online, tried to find out how to do this. I ended up having to read hundreds of pages of documents, different fees, charges, different conditions if you wanted to buy stocks in the UK or in the US. So it was completely frustrating, you know, a frustrating experience. Uh, as opposed to that, I came across a fintech um, and really 15 minutes after uh, I started the process, I had my account, I had my stocks in the UK and in the US, and not because I didn't have to read stuff or, or, or you know, sign some documents. It was just the way the process was defined, you know, how easy things mm -hmm. were done. And I think that's the point is, you know, we as, customer will as customers will start to demand more from the bank. Uh, sometimes it looks like a, a magic miracle that, you know, without yeah. inter physical interaction, uh, uh, you can done almost everything. Uh, Piotr, um, uh, next question goes to um, Piotr from uh, Pivik. Uh, knowing your customers is the is the key for, for, for each industry, probably, especially for, for banking sector. And the question is, how how we can measure uh, customer behaviors uh, in digital worlds, especially in digital worlds? Yeah, thanks, Yarek. So um, truth be told, the, the market for such sol solutions is already quite mature. And mm. the feature set of analytics platforms are, uh, are just similar. The, the key thing, though, it, is to look for the ability to collect and visualize um, all visitor interaction um, up to a single detail so that you can aggregate to the group behavior and understand the channels that your visitors are visiting your uh, your branch or your your um, online presence so uh, also uh, as we go along as as we evolve uh, there are also nice hubs that uh, you would uh, you would look for to around measuring the customer behavior is to have an, uh, say, integrated CRM system or a customer data platform. Uh, you, you have to be careful, though, and as not all platforms can be used by financial institutions, uh, there is 
uh, quite a regulation, uh, a heap of regulations in the financial sector. Um, uh, and you have to take extra care about what do you want to track and how do you gather that data. So uh, definitely the, your analytics solution must offer the highest level of data security and be in line with uh, general data protection laws um, and industry regulations. You have to look for IBA guidelines uh, or mm, your local guidelines or for your banking authority or the GDPR itself. So um, on another factor, another key factor uh, is on the feature side. So specifically the depth uh, of how you can segment the data, how, how deep you can actually uh, get understanding your customer. Not every customer is created equal uh, to, to learn about one's goals and needs. You have to use different sets of data. Uh, you need to analyze the customer behavior based on the demographics, maybe past or current behavior, or based on other characteristics like products this uh, individual is currently using. Uh, lastly, uh, if the data security standards of the uh, analytics solutions are high, uh, you can even consider tracking the post login, so the transactional area of your uh, bank's websites and, and improve those as well. So. Simply in words, uh, the, the biggest advantage of your solutions is that we can use it in highly regulated industry like, fin like finance, mm -hmm. when we have a lot of popular solutions, but yeah, uh, definitely like data uh, security, that... data privacy, etc. So we have uh, a lot of factors. And the second part is the number of functionality of your solution instead of, uh, of of your competitors, for example. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, first regulations and second uh, the the security the the feature set that you look for. Okay. Right. If the company has data because it has your solution, for example, already implemented, and the the question is how re relevant and important uh, is the data in design process of uh, of new customer journey. It, it actually depends on the on the needs and the journey, the actual journey you, you want to track so and and optimize. So uh, the the banks and uh, other regulator industries are are using the data to uh, optimize websites, their websites and apps. Maybe to think about the content strategy, so to learn what people are actually looking for on their sites and make the most uh, valuable or needed content better and more accessible. Or they can use data in the analytics platforms to uh, better the account setup process, the, the, the process that you were discussing here with Nicolas, for instance, uh, and many more uh, other online services um, that, that you need to analyze first. And uh, to, in order to analyze, you have to gather the data. Uh, obviously, you can also make optimizations based on instincts, but this is a risky business. Uh, data is a solid foundation for making changes in a brand's overall online presence and services because data represents actual behavior of your clients. Um, with that, you can uh, map and visualize visitors' journeys and gain insights on what works and what doesn't uh, in marketing, sales, or in customer service. Um, yeah, thanks to that, you can discover unique ways in which your uh, mm -hmm. clients behave. And this was part of your discussions with, discussion with Nicolas that ultimately the, the user will shape the, the customer experience he expects. So um, you definitely need that uh, to improve. And it is um, very important to also only focus on the metrics that are most in line with your uh, business goals. So. If this is content engagement, let it be content engagement. If it's micro conversions or goals, then you should look at those. But uh, you were also talking about frustrations uh, that you had with the process of opening the account. Uh, you can also track those signals as well and optimize against those uh, signals. So mm -hmm. in the end, the, the simple and short answer to your questions is that the, the data and analytics is a must when it comes mm -hmm. down to mapping, optimizing, redesigning of the customer journey. It's why we're using digitization in, uh, in, in company and when we digitize some uh, some process. Uh, thank you, uh, Piotr. Uh, and uh, 
the next questions uh, mm, let me jump to to Wojtek uh, because we, we are talking about the how we can create or redesign customer journey but on the customer journey we have a lot of touch points it can be you know digital channels can be physical um, humans and interaction with humans can be you know humans through uh, interaction through the digital channels as well so the question is uh, mm, Wojtek uh, the part of customer journey is human interaction and how to change the employee behaviors uh, do we have some special solutions or, or, um, or framework on something like this? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, the, the, at some point of customer journey, the customer will meet our employee. And uh, this is especially true if we look uh, at, the, for example, at, at the brick and mortar businesses, uh, the first year banks, for example, that are switching to, uh, to digital work. Uh, so the idea is how to uh, change the behavior of employee so that the employee will suggest the the customer the, the digital uh, the digital um, uh, the digital path uh, to use the digital tools and uh, the answer that two answers I mean from the psychology point of view we have two very strong mechanisms uh, one mechanism is, is um, social influence so we can uh, usually uh, at the very beginning we'll have small group of people that are uh, that uh, are very successful at recommending the digital path and the idea is to catch what they are doing uh, try to analyze what they are doing and promote uh, the day way from this small number of people to the larger number of people to the to your core team this is the first thing the second thing is uh, to use some kind of incentives if we look at for example financial advisor um, uh, the person who is uh, uh, already has customers I and mean, he has customers has customers in terms of uh, the, being an account for some from some some group of customers uh, he need he or she need to switch to this 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 these people to to digital so we need to provide some kind of incentives to reward the people and this is also a part of behavior psychology we are learning new things by being rewarded by being incentivized and what we provide we provide the platform for both things i mean one thing is to learn from the others the second thing is to reward people to give them uh, to give them uh, to give them rewards yeah uh, we are seeing the graph so the, the clue is not dealing only with 20 percent of yeah. top performers or 20 okay. percent of low performers but to engage all employees 60 percent core team almost everybody Yes, yes. The idea is the, the idea is that usually digital solutions are, um, uh, are are something that early adopters and visionaries understand. I mean, the guys that are in the in the front of the of the technological revolution. And you need to you need to uh, put this. Uh, and if you look at the at the typical employ employment structure in large organizations, there are, there is a lot of very diverse people that are maybe not so much interested in technology, not so much into turning customers into digital customers and you need to switch these people to go through this change with the large with this large group not only these visionaries yeah so this is uh, this is very important and uh, of course the, the 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 person that is behind this this change is usually uh, some kind of uh, sales manager who wants to switch to the digital and currently it's the switching to digital is the must but uh, what is also very important that we need to look at the, um, at the next stages of the process. So if this person is, would like to switch the organization to digital, he needs to convince the other guys. If you need to convince the other guys, you need to have some kind of reward and recognition system. So we need to pay people for switching their customers to digital. Why it's important? Because if not, these people will, will, will feel something like I'm losing this customer to the digital. Sometimes the omni-channel strategies is like 
we have omnichannel in terms of we have one channel for the digital and we have one channel for brick and mortar for offices for branches and so on and so on. and this is usually an error i mean it's it's typical mistake because the the people need to if we are thinking about our customer working through many channels with us we need also to think in terms of employee working through many channels with this customer yeah so i need as a as a as a customer advisor i need to see what the customer is doing over the the uh, the uh, the internet channel or mobile channel. I need to see his transaction or her transactions and so on. So training, rewarding, training, uh, rewarding. Yes, training and so. rewarding. Training is for uh, to improve to 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 deliver the knowledge, and this is what mm -hmm. we are doing. After the training, you need to check the results. So that's why we need the performance feedback. After performance, you need to reward for this performance, and after performance, after rewarding, you need to train again. And this is incremental process, and this is mm -hmm. how you change, uh, how you populate behaviors from a small group of people to thousands of people. And mm -hmm. this, this is this is this is our experience. Thank you, Wojtek. And uh, final question uh, to Nicolas. We had uh, about some really modern solutions. The question is how to implement it. It means how to stay agile and implement uh, new model solutions uh, in finance organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I think, you know, it, it comes down to having the right technology. If you have the right technology, uh, you can then start integrating new fintechs. There are plenty of solutions in the market that are very attractive uh, that will make, you know, that customer experience a lot better. They will offer more services to them as well. Um, I'll give you an example of one of our customers. Um, they use our product to actually integrate new fintechs, and they're doing this now almost every three months. Um, and 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 good example of that is actually uh, one of those uh, fintechs actually helped them steadily grow their customer base um, over the last few months uh, during this situation. Even when when you talk to them, uh, they will explain that their their sort of more traditional banking. Uh, line of business was unable to do this. It, they were unable to actually um, generate new customers. Uh, whereas with this fintech, they were able to create and and, and acquire more customers um, over the last few months. So it's a, it's a, it really makes a big big difference um, once you start looking at implementing, you know, and integrating. First of all, also partnering. Um, and creating that nice ecosystem of, of uh, partners that will allow you to uh, enhance your customer journey and your customer experience. So it's about being agile and being brave to try, you know, new uh, new solutions. Thanks a lot for your time, uh, for sharing with us uh, your knowledge, your experience, and um, it was it was pleasure to to talk to you. And at the end, uh, let me finish by quoting Netflix CEO, uh, Mark Randolph, uh, that will never work. The title of, of, of book, uh, The Birth of Netflix and the Amazing Life of uh, Idea. So, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes some, something looks uh, like impossible, but impossible is nothing. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, it was uh, ten number ten uh, episode of Business Now. Uh, I invite you for the next episode. Uh, thank you, everybody, and good luck.